Hi, a oh, very good morning, all of you. See, I'm used to certain things, so I might make some mistakes while speaking. Please excuse me. So, a oh, very good evening, all of you. Today's live session will focus on the following topics, and we'll start with an image-based question, and then we'll proceed accordingly. Okay? So, I hope you guys are all ready. And I have the following question before we start. If you observe the thumbnail of this particular session, I've, I've been incorporating a picture containing fruits. So why do you think I'm doing that? Specifically fruits in the thumbnail for dinner sessions. So why not uh, any other food? Why only fruits? So uh, that's one question which I want to uh, leave before starting this uh, session. So just post your views. I'll let you know at the end of the session. Okay. So I hope you guys are ready. I hope everything is streaming fine. So let's start. So as you can see on routine radiographic examination, you noticed a submerged tooth in relation to 8.5. So deciduous second molar, which of the following is true pertaining to the same? So I'll present you the image. So observe the same and then we'll get back to the options, okay? So just have a look at this radiographic image. So 8.5, it's a submerged tooth. Do observe carefully because we have several questions related to this particular radiographic image. Yeah, hi, a very good evening. Okay. Yeah. So on routine radiographic examination, you notice the submerged tooth in relation to 8.5. So which of the following is true? Clinically, this increased mobility due to resorption. Upon percussion, there is dull sound most commonly affecting mandibular permanent second molar, all of the above. So it's a general question pertaining to this particular case. So which one do you think is more appropriate answer? So clinically, is there any increased mobility? And what about percussion? How do you feel upon percussing a submerged tooth? And which teeth or which tooth are most commonly affected? So Ankur says, uh, since I want to eat all fruits all the time, so I posted the image, but it's completely false. <laughs> okay, I'll get back to that at the end of the session, okay? But I uh, appreciate your enthusiasm, Ankur. Jyotirmai? Okay, very good. So I see most of you saying B, C, D, come on, all options covered. So which of the following is true? First and foremost, you can rule out option A. Clinically, there is increased mobility due to resorption. Do you think you can rule out this option? Have you seen the radiographic image carefully? Don't you see there is uh, plenty of resorption which is evident in case of a second molar, deciduous second molar? Do have a look. You can see there is a lot of resorption. So the root almost is resorbed. So in that case, don't you think there will be increased mobility when there is such an amount of resorption? So how did you rule out option A? Okay, so uh, it's a submerged tooth, ankylosed tooth. So in spite of greater amount of root resorption, still clinically there won't be any mobility. Well done. So you can rule out option A. So clinically there is increased mobility due to resorption, false. Upon percussion there is dull sound, is it? Is that dull sound or is it metallic sound? The dull cushioning sound is normal. This metallic sound, a characteristic feature of ankylosed or submerged tooth, if you remember. So even this is false. What about most commonly affecting mandibular permanent second molar? It's mandibular deciduous second molar, not permanent. So even this is false. So which of the following is true? Right? Convinced? If you have any queries, you can get back through me. Do refer Schaeffer's as well. Exactly. Solid sound. We say solid sound. Good. Fantastic. Now let's move on to the next question. Identify the tooth in IOPA with open apex. I asked you to observe the image carefully, so I'm not going to show that again. Identify the tooth with open apex in the IOPA, which I projected previously. 4, 3, 4, 4. That is canine, first premolar, first molar, second molar. That's just kidding. I'll show you the image as many times as you wish to see. 
So identify the tooth in this particular IOPA with open apex. Leave out this erupting tooth and the submerged tooth. Let's not consider them. But in the, per in the rest of the permanent teeth, starting with canine, first premolar, first molar, and second molar, second molar is not so evident, so let's rule it out. Let's remove that from the equation as well. So canine, first premolar, and first molar. Observe carefully and let me know which of the following has open apex. So this is first molar. You can see this is canine. The corner one is canine here. And this is your premolar. So if you carefully observe, so obviously the apex uh, seems to be open in case of premolar. Even in case of canine, you can see there is a wide open apex. It's not so clear here, but you can clearly make out that it is wide open apex, isn't it? Yeah, to some extent. And what about molar? You can see almost closed apex. On top of it, based on the eruption pattern and eruption timings, you can also say whether a tooth has an open or closed apex, even if you don't observe the radiograph, right? So you know the eruption timings, so usually permanent teeth, two to three years, the apex is still open. I mean, root closure, a root completion occurs uh, for about two to three years after eruption. So in this case, obviously, as you all rightly said, in case of first premolar, which usually erupts at 10 to 12 or 11 to 12 years of age, has an open apex, right? And also canine, if you carefully observe, even in case of canine. Open apex, we say the apex is open when the apical opening is more than, I discussed this previously as far as I remember, 1.5 mm. So greater than 1.5 mm, if the apex is wide enough, particular uh, to that dimension, it's considered as open. Also, you can see in case of premolar, wide canal or blunderbuss canal, isn't it? So I hope it's clear. So obviously, 4.3, 4, 4, no 4, 6, no 4, 7, okay? Yeah, good. 4, 5, yeah, of course, we can call it as open, but uh, still, it is. it hasn't even erupted, right? Yeah, but still, as you said, it's open. Yeah, good. Okay, so I'll repeat once again. We'll start from third question. So in third question, we've seen in case of ankylosis or deciduous molars, the submersion is evident in the radiograph because of which of the following? Apical migration of tooth, coronal migration of tooth, growth of alveolar process, or A and C. As I was telling you, third time. So option A seems to be quite convincing, but it is completely false. The position of deciduous molar remains the same. But we're calling it or we are uh, having that submerged appearance because of combination of two important factors. The first one is the growth of alveolar process. And the second one is the larger size of permanent teeth because of which there is an illusion of submersion of this deciduous second molar. But factually speaking, its position remains the same. I sincerely pray that this time it is recording fine. So is it fine? So have my prayers been answered? Was it fine? Can I proceed? Okay, thank you. Thank you, planet Earth. So now let's move on to the next question. So the answer to this particular question is C, growth of alert process coupled with the larger size of permanent teeth, isn't it? Moving on to the next question, non-functional cusp is evident in which of the following? Mandibular first premolar, mandibular second premolar, maxillary first premolar, maxillary second premolar. In fact, Priya has asked me a doubt pertaining to this question. So Priya, I hope you have seen the mail. So which of the following teeth or tooth has a non-functional cusp? And when I say non-functional cusp, what do you mean by that? Yeah, even if the prayers are not answered, I'm ready to repeat infinite number of times. Of course, it's a torture for you guys. So, which of the following do you think has a non-functional cusp? 
yeah, which doesn't involve chewing, mastication, occlusion, etc. Wonderful. So non-functional cusp is evident in case of mandibular first premolar. So the lingual cusp is very small, underdeveloped, and it is non-functional, right? So consider this very, very important. In case of rest of the teeth, you know, the buccal cusp, lingual cusp, they're all well-developed and they are functional. Stand cusps, so we have different names, so functional and non-functional cusps, right? I hope it's clear. And in which teeth uh, do you find this characteristic mesolingual group? Again, the same options. Mandibular first premolar, second premolar, maxillary first and second. So in which of the following do you find the characteristic mesolingual developmental group? Exactly. Again, mandibular first premolar. Which of the following has a characteristic mesial developmental group? Not mesolingual, mesial developmental group. So which among them has a characteristic mesial developmental group? Fantastic. Maxillary first premolar. Now, let's move on to the final question. Which of the following resorptive processes is ankylosis related? So we're seeing that there is submersion, right? I hope you have carefully observed the radiograph. Again, which of the following resorptive process is ankylosis related? Surface resorption, inflammatory resorption, replacement resorption, none of the above or all of the above. In fact, we had a question from the same in one of the previous breakfast sessions, as far as I remember. So anyways, uh, let's try to correlate with this particular radiographic appearance. So again, observe this radiographic image carefully. So you can clearly see that there is a union between the tooth and the bone. So we're saying it's a case of ankylosis or submersion. So this could be because of trauma or several other factors, genetic factors, including genetic factors as mentioned in Schaefer's. Now let's get back to this question. So which of the following resorptive process is ankylosis related? Surface resorption is repair related as we discussed previously as given in Grossman. Inflammatory resorption is infected related. So option C is right answer as most of you rightly mentioned. Replacement resorption is ankylosis related. So because of trauma, there is loss of, like take for example, the best example is evolution, loss of periodontal ligament and cementum, exposure of the root to osteoclast, leading to resorption and bony union of tooth and uh, the alar bone, leading to this characteristic metallic sound. So as we discussed prior, right? So ankylosis related replacement resorption, okay? So these are some of the topics which I wanted to highlight in this specific video. So all I'm asking you is uh, make a notes of all that we have discussed so far and consider that as your homework for this particular session. No other questions, okay? Just make a note and also see if you can elaborate on the following along with examples. And most importantly, try to observe images and also I'll try to share this radiographic image and other related information if necessary pertaining to this video, okay? I hope it's clear. And you have any questions whatsoever, you can always get back through mail 24 by 7. And before I conclude, let's summarize all that we have discussed so far. So I've shown you a radiograph and I've asked you the following questions. So whenever it's ankylosed or whenever there is resorption, I mean, whenever there is submersion of a particular tooth or ankylosis, you don't find mobility. So there is no questioning. There is mobility is not possible. As we have seen in the image, there is bony union, isn't it? So in spite of severe resorption, there will be still be no mobility whatsoever. This is very, very important. And upon percussion, there is dull sound in normal case scenario, right? Uh, solid sound, metallic sound in case of ankylosis, as you guys mentioned. And most commonly affects, the submerged tooth is most commonly seen in relation to deciduous mandibular second molar, 8.5 or 7.5. Identify the tooth with open apex, so the open apex criteria is very important, more than 1.5 mm, as mentioned in Grossman. Okay, so in, in our particular radiograph, uh, it's uh, I mean the canine premolars, 
do have open epics as you guys rightly mentioned and this submersion is not because of change in position of tooth but rather it's because of the growth of alveolar bone coupled with emergence of larger permanent teeth which creates an illusion that, that this tooth is submerged but it's not actually submerged okay it's an illusion now non functional cusps among the following lingual cusps in case of mandibular first premolar there is a cusp but it is small underdeveloped and non functional in line with buccal triangular ridge as mentioned in wheelers so the one which has a cap mesolingual developmental groove again it is mandibular first premolar the one with characteristic developmental groove it is maxillary first premolar that's right? so all characteristic features try to memorize them as much as possible and finally which are the following resorptive processes ankylosis related surface resorption is repair related inflammatory resorption is infection related whereas replacement resorption is ankylosis related right i hope it's clear so i'll see you again tomorrow morning at 11 am indian standard time and uh, as i said if you have any questions or any queries or whatever you're always welcome to get back to mails 24 by 7 so have a great night and love you all take care <laughs> wasundra seems to be very much interested in fruits the reason why i have incorporated the fruit image in the thumbnail is see at least in real life we never have fruits i mean we never love fruits i mean we love specific fruits but not all fruits not in health uh, conscious manner so we love uh, fried foods starchy foods sugar foods so i decided that at least on thumbnail let me have those uh, you know uh, images of fruit so that we can have that sense of illusion that we are having fruits for dinner so that's the answer okay so i'm glad you asked vasundra so oh, even renuka has the same question okay guys right you're welcome so see you all again tomorrow morning at 11 am in instant time take care good night